Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Thought I'd give you a little update on the 630 meter CW transmitter. Um, and also a uh, clarification. Now from the part one video I was describing the power amp that I'm using from uh, GW3UEP's design. And uh, on his schematic he has it labeled as a class D power amplifier which I parroted in the video. And it was pointed out to me that that is actually incorrect, and that's that's right, that is incorrect. Um, the, it's a class E amplifier. Now a class D and a class E amplifier are switching amplifiers, where they use a power MOSFET that uh, simply switches on and switches off, switches on and switches off as the incoming sine wave rises and falls. Uh, and you get a high efficiency with that, but it's a non-linear amplifier, so it's only good for carrier modes, right? Um, class D is usually used for audio applications, and they modulate the uh, pulse width of that switching MOSFET, and then use a, usually like a capacitor network to smooth the uh, output in, back into an audio waveform. Class E, which is really what this is, um, is usually used for RF applications. And again, it's a switching power MOSFET, so that part of it's the same, but there will, there will be a resonant um, LC network on its output that will, due to the capacitor's um, charge and discharge time and the rise and fall time of the magnetic field on the inductor and their interaction, will smooth that square wave um, coming out of the power device back into a sine wave. So this is actually a class E amplifier. Okay, progress. Um, the uh, control board, the Arduino and uh, SI5351 VFO control board is done and installed in the chassis. Uh, I had somebody on the, I've been posting pictures to the Patreon, Patreon, Patreon group, and I had somebody ask to see the point to point connections underneath the board and I forgot about that, and I've already installed it, so I'm not going to pull it back out of the chassis to show that. But I'll, I'll show them on the PA board, which I've been working on. But to this chassis, um, let me show you the front of it here. You should be able to see that on one camera. I made a nice label um, for it. If I tilt this up, I don't know if the GoPro will focus on it or not, but we'll see if we can get an alternative view there. Um, if not, I'll take a photograph. If neither of these look good, I'll take a photograph and just put that up on the screen. Uh, but my, uh, my label process, um, I was thinking this morning um, that I might do an entire video on how I do these labels because that's really easy, uh, really easy to do. I, I make that up in Inkscape, print it on a color laser printer or color inkjet, laminate it and glue it on the front, and you end up with a very nice looking uh, front panel um, label. And the back panel, same deal. I got a nice uh, label for the back panel. So it's, uh, it almost looks commercial. Well, it looks about as commercial as early MFJ gear did, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's a dig at MFJ, sorry. <laughs> um, inside of here, this case that I used had um, some holes in it uh, that I didn't need. Uh, so I 3D printed these little plugs. So it's just a flat piece that has a one millimeter rise in the shape of the hole that, that perfectly plugs the holes and I just glued those in place so that I could apply the label on the back and so the case is turning out really nice. VFO and control board um, as I said is done. I've got to write the software yet but uh, yeah that's that. The power amplifier board I was working on yesterday and here it is. Show it to both cameras here. There's one camera view and here's the GoPro view. So it's it's almost done. I've got uh, I've got the components around the, the MOSFET done. Uh, this is the filter from for the input voltage. This is what I've got to wire up yet. Is uh, the two capacitors, resistor, and ferrite bead on the uh, input voltage, and the switching relay that's going to switch that voltage. 
uh, and then that's all I really got left to do and I'll be able to wire this into the chassis and it'll be done. Um, this is this coil and that capacitor make the resonating part of the uh, output circuit, the Class E amplifier, that smooths the output back to something like a sine wave. And then this capacitor, that coil, and that capacitor down there next to the relay is the Pi Network uh, low-pass filter that eliminates harmonics. And then it comes out to the relay, which will switch the antenna output jack from here in transmit mode to a coax going over to the uh, controller board where the grounding relay for the receive jack is and then the receive jack. So that's the TR relay, transmit receive relay there. So that's that's where I'm at on this. It's almost done. A couple of more components, a little bit of wiring, and I'll be able to put it in the chassis. And then the hardware will be done, and I'll be ready to start writing the software. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Sorry I didn't film any of the construction on this um, this guy. I uh, uh, I'm having such a hard time. Uh, I, I only get 20 to 30 minutes at a time down here to work before my back forces me to go back upstairs and lay down for a bit. So I just work. I just come down and I just work and I don't, I, I haven't been bothering with setting up the cameras and, uh, and filming much. I did a little bit, but I don't think that those clips turned out very well. So I thought I'd just do this whole summary in one take here and, and fill in with that. Um, but for the guy that wanted to see the point to point wiring on the back, there it is. Very simple. Um, I use, in a lot of cases, the leads from the components themselves, and I just bring them over to join up with the other areas where they need to go and then solder together. So I just, you know, as I go, I'm just basically building up kind of like foil traces on a PC board, just using the leads from the components themselves to make the connections. Uh, so, yeah, real simple on the back. Um, easy technique. I've built things this way ever since I was a kid. Uh, 14, 15 years old when I was starting to really build a lot of stuff. So, yeah, that's all that is. Real simple. The hardest part with doing this kind of stuff is laying it out on the board. I, uh, I, I physically laid the components on the board many times and rearranged them, and I'm still not happy with the layout, but you, you need to get as close as you can with where everything's going to sit logically so that the connections will all run well. On the... Uh, control and VFO board, actually, um, I could have done better. <laughs> After I was halfway through building it, I realized that I probably should have uh, put the relay driver circuitry over here in this big open area instead of cramming it all over here. But uh, yeah, it kept the runs short doing it this way. The resistors from the data pins on the Arduino come right out to the two transistors which are tucked into this little space. Whew, man, it's hard to see that. Tucked into this little space here next to the relay, but I probably should have put the, the relay driver circuitry over here. But yeah, it'll work. You know, it, it doesn't look the neatest because you got to do point to point wires and you know all these wires going up to the back of the front panel are kind of ugly, but I wanted to keep them short. Um, I'm still thinking actually about taking some PC board material and, and putting a shield right here between the VFO board and the PA board. We'll see how it goes when I first fire it up and kick some RF out of it. If I don't get any interference or crashing problems on the Arduino, I'll leave it. But if it has issues with uh, RF, then I'll just take some PC board material. And let's see, this is going to fit in here like so. And there's just enough of a gap here where I could um, put in a piece of PC board material to shield the Arduino. You know, maybe make a little Faraday cage for it. If I have to, we'll see how it goes. But that's, that's how it's going to look when it's all done and wired in. Uh, it's going to be, you know, neat enough, I suppose, and hopefully functional. So that's where we're at. Hardware's almost done. I'm going to finish it up. And then I'm going to start on the software, and uh, I'm going to do the third video will be on the software, how it works, initial testing and uh, measuring um, the output of the thing. And if I have an antenna solution by that point in time, hopefully an on-the-air contact. 
Um, but if that video runs long, then we might just make the fourth video the, the it's done and here it is working and let's make some contacts video. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, 73 and we'll see you in the next video.